this is Jason Bower with LA Networks. I'm going to try and wrap up the uh, series today on ACI for Network Engineers. We're a Cisco Gold Partner uh, headquartered in Los Angeles, although we do work uh, all over the country. And today we're going to take a lot of the other lessons we've talked about and bring it together in how do we actually configure interfaces. I'm going to focus on Prompt VPC interfaces, not because those are the only kinds of interfaces that you can configure, but because I think those are predominantly the interfaces we configure, whether it's ACI or NXOS or Catalyst. When we talk about a data center, we're usually talking about trunked interfaces. We almost always have them configured redundantly, usually in a VPC, um, possibly a VSS, although I don't see that much in the data center any longer. And so we're going to spend most of our time there. Uh, we're going to be going today, or this first section, I'm going to break this into two or maybe three videos, probably two. Uh, but the first video is just going to be going through this drawing. If you would like a copy of this drawing, by the way, if you think this is helpful or useful, uh, just let me know. You can reach me uh, down below. My contact information should be there, uh, and I'll be happy to provide it to you. Okay? Uh, and it's nothing original with me. I had this after I, I had multiple conversations with different folks, um, but I think uh, for, for myself and for some of my customers, this, this approach to doing things has worked out really well. Now, if you're used to using NXOS and you're looking at this, you're already daunted, and I don't blame you. So was I, because um, this is a lot, right? I'm used to just, I go into, you know, create my VPC domain, I go into my interfaces, I add them to the port channel, I go into the port channel, I tie it to the domain, and, you know, we're done. Well, it's a little bit different in ACI. Everything's a little bit different in ACI, and interface configuration is up there. I would say, I take a step back real quick, I would say, in general, in SDN, there's a learning curve, and it's rather steep up front, and then as you kind of understand what it's doing, it starts to taper off. Now, that's, in a lot of ways, the success or failure of an SDN solution to me is everyone's going to have a bit of a steep learning curve. Is the taper off kind of come down like this, or is there a steep learning curve and it barely tapers, right? Um, hopefully, uh, we get that kind of drop that's rather steep on the back end. Uh, I think that to, to do that in ACI, you're going to have to take a programmatic approach, and that's exactly what this is. We're doing all this upfront work to create these objects. And the idea is to be able to create them once, figure out how they're created, and either reuse them if that's appropriate, or if not, how to then take those and programmatically build out a script that does this sort of thing. Perhaps put that in a portal or a catalog or something that's beyond the scope. But the idea is to be able to do this programmatically. Uh, I will say that when you're using ACI, the item that will probably help the most with that is the API inspector. Once you've gone through this process and you really understand it, you could then go through and create a dummy VPC but have the API inspector up, and it's going to capture all the code you need to put in to automate this. Okay, So then you're going to work with your development team, uh, and uh, you're going to have to provide some of that knowledge because you understand what VLANs are, they don't. You understand what leaves are, they don't, and so forth. But it shouldn't be too cumbersome a task to work with them and get that uh, working. So that said, though, we're going to go through an old school today. Uh, I kind of think of this in two parts. I've got the side over here, which involve which uh, switches do I want to use and which interfaces do I want to use. And then I have the side over here. That's the VLANs that I want. What type of device am I connecting to? We're going to assume some kind of bare metal appliance. It could be a firewall or it could be a standalone server or some other kind of network appliance. And then this part in the middle is what's going to kind of glue us all together. Okay? With that said, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start over here on my right with uh, switch profiles and switch selectors. <coughs> After your ACI fabric is first built and, and brought up, one of the first things you usually do is go in and create switch profiles. 
at least that's one of the first things I usually do. Then you go in and uh, you'll see a lot of references to the naming uh, video that I did a little bit ago. So if you don't recognize these names, you can name them whatever you would like, but you might want to go watch that video because naming an ACI is very key and critical to, to success of adoption. So I'm going to create my profiles first. Now the profile is what I think of as a container object. It doesn't do anything unless you put something in the container. The rule of thumb is I have a profile for every leaf in my fabric, and then I have a profile for each pair of leaves in a VPC domain. Let me say that again. I have a profile for each individual leaf in my fabric, and then I have another profile for each pair of leaves that comprise a VPC domain. Okay? So as you can see, if I've got leaf 201 and leaf 202, and then I want to VPC them together, I do a profile for leaf 201 and 202. But these are just container objects. They don't do anything on their own. We have to put something in them. They need to contain something. What do they contain? They contain switch selectors. And so what happens is, in the switch selector, I select which actual leaf goes into which actual profile. So obviously, leaf 201 is going to go into the profile 201. Leaf 202 will go into the profile 202. It's a checkbox, so I can select more than one leaf. So leaf 201 and 202 will go into the profile for leaf 201 and 202. Okay. By the way, just so you know, you could even have a, a switch profile that encompasses every leaf. So if you had a... <coughs> a need in your data center, if you said, I want to always reserve, for example, port one on every single leaf in my environment to do X, I might just create a profile for all leaves or something like that, and then just add every leaf to it. That's not really what we're here to talk about, okay? So that's how I create my switch profile and how I put my switch selectors in the profile. Why do we do that? Well, and why, why are we focused on VPCs? ACI likes to assume that you're going to VPC everything. I don't think that's an unreasonable assumption. Uh, you know, in NXOS, almost all my accounts are only doing VPCs anyway. Uh, a few of my accounts may still be doing some VSS in the data center as well. But it's not uncommon these days to, to do or more attach. The other thing that ACI really likes is symmetry, okay? What do I mean by symmetry? I mean, if I connect the port 6 on leaf 201, I want to connect the port 6 on leaf 202, you know, for my VPC, right? And then I'm just uh, putting port 6 and 6 into a VPC, okay? Unlike NXOS, you're not going to assign uh, an actual VPC number to anything. ACI takes care of that for you. It's kind of abstracted from you. But the interfaces are not. And that's what we're going to get to next. After we've done our switch profile and our switch selector, we're going to move over to the interface profile and the interface selector. Very similar process, right? Probably not too surprising. I create my profiles. Again, one interface profile per leaf, and then one interface profile per leaves that are in a VPC pair. So again, Interface profile for leaf 203, 204, interface profile for leaf 203, and 204. And now you can start to understand the symmetry. If I want to put a VPC on port 6 on 203 and 204, I don't go to the int prof leaf 203 and pick port 6, and then go to the 204 and pick port 6. I come to the combined object and I pick port 6 one time and it configures it on both leaves simultaneously, okay? Similar, if we went back, and I'm going to drop this analogy after this, but if we wanted to do something for port one on every single leaf in the data center, that's why we would want to do this sort of thing, so that I could just configure it once and it's done everywhere, okay? <clears throat> Note that your switch profile object gets called into the interface profile object. Those are linked. That's how I know what interface on which leaf or which switch, okay? 
Now we come over here. These are a little more odd. These are fairly simple to understand. These aren't horrible to understand, but they are a little more odd because we don't really have a very good one-for-one -one type of concept in NXOS. Pools, domains, and AEPs. Pools are just that. They are groups or pools of VLANs. A pool could be an object of one, okay? You could put just VLAN 600 into a pool. Or you could put VLAN, you know, uh, 2 to 10 into a pool. Pools come in two flavors. They can either be static or dynamic. Let me give you a little bit of help there. Dynamic pools are what you're going to use when you're connecting into a hypervisor. It doesn't matter which hypervisor. If you're connecting to a hypervisor, you're usually going to use dynamic pools. If you're connecting to any kind of standalone host, whether that's a firewall or a load balancer or a standalone server or a storage array, any of those sorts of things, you're probably going to do a static pool. Okay? The pool object gets called by the domain object. The pool is linked to the domain. The domain is just saying, what type of connectivity do I want here? Do I want physical connectivity? Do I want hypervisor connectivity? Do I want an external routed connection or an external bridged connection? Those are called L3 externals or L2 externals. For this example, and when we do the next video, which is going to go onto the GUI and actually cement some of this in for you, we're just going to worry about physical domains. Okay? That's it. That will make it very easy. Just physical domains. So, how, and by the way, remember, go back and relook at the, the naming standards because we have things like, you know, what we're going to call a physical domain, what we're going to call a pool, and so forth. So when I go into the domain, I'm going to link it to the pool, and I'm going to tell it it's, in our case, a physical. And then I'm going to go into the AEP. The closest thing I can tell you for the AEP, it's kind of a weird object for, for those of us that are more traditional networking, like myself. Think of it as a switch port um, allowed command, okay? What VLANs am I going to allow on this switch port, okay? It calls the domain. Because it calls the domain and the domain calls the pool, it calls both of those. So it's a container object that holds both of those. And now we can probably start to see how this ties together. Over on this side over here, I've got interfaces and switches. Now I've got VLANs and devices, and I need to merge them together. Well, I do that on the center object. Uh, the first thing to know are the interface policies. These you typically, maybe not always, but you typically set these up once at the beginning. And then you don't usually have to go and mess with them. But an interface policy is effectively any interface setting that you might set, you know, through CLI normally. That'd be like whether you want auto negotiation or hard set speed and duplex. CDP on or off, LDP on or off, or transmit on and transmit off, and so forth. LACP uh, active or on or off, again. So you're going to do those. You're going to set all those individual policies and give them good names, right? Again, naming is just so key to these objects in ACI because these objects are all over, right? Right now, everything we're looking at is going to be over on the uh, over on the the fabric uh, menu, okay? Access policies, fabric access policies. So we create all these different interface policies, and then I come up to a policy group. And in our case, it's almost always going to be a VPC policy group. May not always be that, but you know, if you think about it, it usually is. Usually things are dual connected. There are absolutely exceptions. That's fine. You can do just a regular access policy group, for example, if, if that makes more sense. But let's, let's use the use case that we're mostly going to use. I'm going to create a VPC policy group. Again, we'll go into the GUI and do all this. And then under that policy group, I'm going to grab whichever of these policies I want. I want CDP on. I want LDP on. I want LACP active. You know, maybe I've got a storm control policy I want on there or whatever, right? I want, I want auto detect for my speed and duplex. I grab all these interface policies. I'll say there might be 15 to 18 interface policies. 
I tie them into my policy group, and in the policy group, I call this AEP. <clears throat> when I call this AEP into the policy group, it automatically ties in the VLAN pool and the domain. Okay? On my interface selector, so let's say it was port 6 on uh, leaves 203, 204 again. I go back into this interface selector and I call this VPC policy group. Okay? And now you can see how end-to-end -end everything gets tied together. Okay? Although I have the policy group and the interface policies in the center, they're not really in the center per se, but I find that for most of my clients, this is a nice, easy way to start thinking about this process. Because they do tend to meet there in terms of how the GUI is configured. And I put this in the center because this is where the AP gets tied. Okay? But you do have to go back into the interface and actually link that policy group you created. It just looks odd if I put this in the center. So I hope you'll bear with me on that. Once that's done, then my, my policy goes and it gets instantiated down on the fabric. Okay? So, again, we have our selectors, our profiles over here, our pools, our domains, and our AEPs over there. All that kind of gets glued together in this policy group. And then that gets deployed down on actual interfaces on actual leaf switches. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense to you. Now, like I said, um, if you would like a copy of this, please you know, just let me know. My contact information should be down below. I'll be happy to send you a copy. Uh, it's not proprietary to me. I'm not the first one to come up with this, uh, but I'm happy to share an electronic copy with you if you would like. Also, one word uh, of warning. When you're first starting with ACI, you don't have to do things this way, but I'm going to recommend you do. Figure out your VPC workflow. I've got, as you can see, I have it here where I'm going profile selector, profile selector, pool domain, AEP, pro policies, policy group, and then I tie it back. Okay? That's what works for me. And that's what works for most of my clients who do is who use ACI. You could go into the AEP, and from the AEP, you could create a domain, and from that dialogue, you could create the pool, and never have left the AEP. I really don't recommend that when you're first starting out, because you're not getting a sense for where all these different objects are and what all these different objects do. So I'm a big proponent. I'm a big proponent when you're starting off of being very methodical about this. It's a few more steps, and it's going to be a few more minutes up front. But I think your understanding kind of goes a little bit deeper. You, you develop some muscle memory, and uh, I think you should take advantage of that. Once you understand what a domain is, what a pool is, what an AP is, if you just want to go into the AP and from the AP create the domain and from the domain create the pool, go for it. Because you know where all those objects are. You know what your naming standard is for them. If you need to go troubleshoot them later, you know where to navigate and go find them. All that will already be ingested into your muscle memory. But until you're at that stage, I really recommend you follow some kind of flow. Again, high level the flow for me is switch profile to switch selector, interface profile to interface selector, VLAN pool, domain, usually physical, AEP, interface policies, meaning the policy group. The policy group also calls the AEP, and then the interface selector calls the policy group. Okay? If you do it that way, and you do it that way consistently, at least for the first several times until you're comfortable with all that, then if you want to find shortcuts, you can find shortcuts. Ultimately, the goal is to actually automate this. So the goal eventually is to pull up your API inspector and go through this. The profile, the selectors, profile selectors, the pools, the domains, the AEPs, the policies, the policy groups. Okay? Maybe you don't even need all those objects, I'm just saying. You pull up that API inspector, you do all that, and then you save it off as XML, you work with your development team, and I, you know, I've seen clients who 
maybe take and they have people put something into a, a catalog like interface like in ServiceNow or maybe they fill out a spreadsheet in Excel and then I just have a little Python script that ingests that information from one source, spits out the code in XML and then actually pushes it out to the fabric. And so it's a very automated process because this is frankly cumbersome. And when we go through the GUI, you're going to see this is cumbersome. It works. It works fine. I, it, and once you get used to it, it can go reasonably fast. But the ultimate idea here in any SDN solution, this isn't tied just to ACI, but any SDN solution is to find a way to programmatically automate these things. That's why there's that steep learning curve at the front is because in the past, it's device by device management, right? SSH in, put in my commands, write map. SSH into the next device, put in my commands, write map. SSH into the next device, et cetera, et cetera. Up front, this looks like more work. But once you've figured out your process and you know what works for you, you're probably not creating switch profiles, for example, every time and switch selectives. <clears throat> But whatever it is you're going to do, whatever your process is that works for you, once you figure that out, use that API inspector, and then you work with your developers, and you find a way that you, you simplify and empower your user community. Now, for us as network engineers, the user community is usually IT itself, right? It might be the VMware team or the storage team or what have you. But wouldn't it be nice if they just went into a catalog and they just said something like, uh... I need two interfaces in the data center. Here's my host, happens to be in rack, blah, and blah. Um, and the cabling was run to leaf, blah, and blah. And I would like the following VLANs to be trucked down. And they just fill out a little dialogue. And then it goes at an API level, ties right in, and pushes all this. And you weren't even in, involved, right? That's ultimately where you're going because... Then we go through from a deployment time that, that's up here to one that's down here, right? And it's all done consistently, right? Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, GUI interface and get started with that. Thanks.